So a while back, Howard over there at the Cabot Bluebill Channel sent me an old S-wing hatchet with a worn out leather handle. I've had this project in mind for a while. So I'm gonna do a stacked oak handle. Let's see how that turns out. So you can buy these small quarter inch thick oak boards at either uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. This piece is a quarter inch by three inch, four foot long. And uh, when you buy these boards, you can kind of pick them out, look through the grain. I usually try to go with ones with more grain or, uh, or a desired color that I like. I have another piece here that has more of a pinkish hue to it. Kind of like it was a piece of red oak that was cut. It has a coloration of red oak. For those oak boards, you can get several different looks just depending on how you orient the grain. On these two knives, I alternated the grain 90 degrees. And as you uh, rotate the knife, it's almost like the, uh, the stripes kind of change color from light to dark, and that's pretty cool. This knife, I kept the grain in the same direction, and I alternated the checks. I haven't decided if I like this one the best or these other ones the best yet. And on this one, the same thing where I kept the grain direction the same and alternated the checks, but I had the checks on the uh, sides of the handle versus the top and bottom of the handle. And this piece must have been, uh, looks to have been red oak. This stuff over here. So let me get this handle pulled apart. Uh, Looks like it's pretty rusted under there, so I'll probably just, once I get the old handle off, I'll probably get it with soak in vinegar. I've got a carbide cutting bit, a little multi-tool. Let's see how that works. If it don't work too well, I'll, I'll go to a grinder. We gotta get these mushroom sections taken out of the bottom of the handle. My bit's working out pretty well. I didn't take all of it off. I still want to have a little bit of steel left over so that I can paint it back over once I'm done with the handle. Let's see if I can get it to break loose with a screwdriver now. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. The leather is just too far gone to, to be prying against it right there. There we went. It's pretty well rusted up too, so I think I'll give it a soak in vinegar while the uh, while the tang is soaking. See how hard it is to get the handle off now. Finally, took a lot of doing. I cracked this one, but I think I'm still reuse it.
Finally. That took a little bit of doing to get the handle off. Uh, down at the bottom, it's about one and seven eighths. So I think I'll just start out cutting two inch long washers. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be three inches wide. You know how they do at the lumber store. It's sold as three inches wide, but it's actually two and a half. So I'll be ripping this in half. It'll be about an inch and a quarter wide. Um, the handle is six and three quarters of an inch long. So that means that I will need 27 pieces of quarter inch wide material to get me to six and three quarter. Uh, of course, I'll be minus the thickness of these plastic spacers I'm gonna put back in the handle. But if I have a few extra washers cut, that's not gonna hurt anything. The holes in these washers are the same size. They're, they're right at seven eighths. So I'm gonna get set up and go ahead and start drilling holes on all my washers, working off the centers. I'm gonna glue these blocks together two at a time so that when I do start drilling, it'll just be less pieces that I have to mess with. I can drill two at once and fit two at once instead of messing with 28 pieces. Before I glue them up, I'm going to smooth out the two sides that will be glued just to remove any burrs and uh, maybe roughen up the edge a little bit and give the glue something a little better to hold on to. drilled holes for one of the pieces to use as a template. I'll be drilling a pilot hole and then going back with a larger 5 16 bit to remove more material. I've got the handle fitted. I'm gonna pull everything back off and uh, let it soak in vinegar overnight. It's set overnight in the vinegar. Looks like a lot of the rust is falling off. It's down at the bottom now. Let's pull it out, and see how it looks. I can feel a lot of the rust is flaked off. 
messy. I'm going to give it a scrub with a wire brush and water, and I'll get right back with you. September 16th of 81. I wonder if that's the date that this hatchet was casted. If so, I would have been almost four years old at the time. Pretty cool. I decided to do away with the original spacers and thought I'd liven it up a little bit with some Corian and a piece of brass. So I've got those laid in there. Now it's ready for glue. Before I glued the handle up, I, I traced the pattern onto a piece of cardboard and cut it out so I can mark the tang onto my uh, handle. That way I don't cut into it when I'm cutting and sanding. I also have another S-Twing hatchet that I've had for several years. It hadn't had a whole lot of use. It stays in my hunting bag. but. Uh, when I trace the outline of this handle to kind of get a basic profile. And I'm gonna cut this out on a bandsaw. That's about all I feel comfortable with taking off on the uh, bandsaw. I'll do the rest of it on the sander. Now it's time for my favorite part. I've got some boiled linseed oil in this jar. It's always fun to get the oil on it and uh, see how that grain pops out. You know what? 
I never did wipe the loose dust off of it. Let me do that. going to go ahead and coat all the metal parts with linseed oil as well. That's actually another use for linseed oil is to protect metal. Let's see, I left a piece of tape on there. The linseed oil will seal it up and prevent it from rusting until it gets, until it gets rubbed off, of course. Go ahead and do that. If any of y'all worked with linseed oil before, you know that it is super slow to dry, so it'll take about six to eight hours for the stuff to dry. After it dries, I'll do another coat or two on the handle. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It was a lot of work, a lot more work than I anticipated. I've done several of these stacked oak handles on knives, but uh, you know, normally a knife handle is quite a bit smaller than this hatchet handle. But, uh, it's still a really fun project nonetheless. I thought about showering up the rest of it, but uh, I don't know, I kind of think the old the old pit of steel kind of gives it character. And uh, of course I'll get it sharpened up and I'll make a sheath for it as well. I guess that could be another video. I like how that grain pops.